¿Qué pasa los amigos de Jardín? No, that's not right. Hey, what's up garden friends? If you're a tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I'm great. It is a beautiful day out here. There's gonna be some background noise, that's all right. Other people are outside doing yard work. I have some uh, Talavera pots I want to get planted up and I thought this would be a good time to do it. Isn't this a beautiful pot? I am a lover of bright, vibrant colors and I've always been a big fan of the uh, Talavera pottery. There's a lot of diversity, not just with the Talavera, just like pretty much any type of Mexican pottery. A very rich, beautiful culture that has some very rich, beautiful designs, whether it's bright and colorful and vibrant or not, whether it's pottery for plants or in the home. There's a lot out there. There's a lot to choose from. I used to have one that had like goldfish all over it and it was so pretty, but uh, that was when I learned that these can't stay outside in winter. Learned that lesson when I was a teenager. So now I just stick with smaller pottery of the Tadavera so I can move it in during the winter time more easily. That way I don't leave it outside and have it broken because a lot of time and effort goes into making these. These are all hand painted and designed and uh, oftentimes depending on where you get them from. The bottoms of them will be labeled as to like what region they came from. But some of the other ones I've had where like they actually say who made them and what city they're from. I think that that's so cool to be able to have that appreciation to uh, the artist and to the work that goes into them. I don't know who made this one, but there's still a story behind them. I'll talk about that later. So my plan for this one right here is I'm just gonna pop some succulents in it. I just started potting this thing up and realized, um, wait a minute, filming a video here, might wanna get this on camera. So I'm just doing succulents in this one right here. Not going to be doing anything crazy. I don't want anything spilling over the edges. I think that that would detract from the pottery. If something spills a little bit over the side, that would be okay, right? As long as it's not too dramatic. I'll make up my mind on that when I'm done tucking these echeverias in here. These are some gorgeous echeverias. I'm sure by the time I get these in place, I'm gonna have to completely <laughs> recenter this aeonium that's in the middle too. Everything I'm using in this, I, excuse you, focus. Everything I'm using in this are things that I've pulled from other arrangements that I had sitting in my garage throughout the winter time. So they aren't heavily rooted right now just because they've been chilling all winter long. But that's okay. That's one of the great things about succulents is they're very forgiving and getting them potted up now when temperatures are a little bit more mild and cool outside will give them a chance to go ahead and root out without being stressed very much. Made a little bit of a change here. Ugh, this lighting today. I moved the aeonium to the back of the pot just because this is only gonna be seen from one side anyways. So it being circular doesn't really matter. I had two of these purple echeverias and only one of the green ones, so it just made more sense to have the green ones centered in there. These are, I think, Pearl von Nuremberg, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's not that full but that's okay. All these echeverias that are in here are ones that will get pretty big by like midsummer, so they're going to need some space. I might tuck some tricolor sedums into these corners. I think that would look kind of nice and add a little bit more color. And I just pulled these from a separate planter or a pot. This is a perennial sedum. So I just leave it outside all winter long. I think that this would be good for something like this because it's kind of thin and wispy it's not really going to cover the pottery up too much yeah i don't want to hide the art of the pot that would defeat the whole purpose of having these beautiful pots want to be able to see that pretty design on there yeah yeah it'll it'll fill out and look nice it doesn't like some of the other succulent planters i do where i just stuff them full of succulents i actually kind of want it to be a little bit more sparse like i said because i want the echeverias to have room to grow that aeonium that's up here the uh, i think the variety is called kiwi but i'm not positive that will get a little bit taller and come up over everything, just a little bit. And then the sedums, 
<laughs> yeah, they look scraggly, but I mean, I literally just ripped them out of a pot that they were growing in. So they'll fill in okay down well. So they'll be more bushy up here where they're packed in. And uh, anything that comes over the sides probably will stay a little bit more spindly. I may go ahead and trim those off and replant them somewhere else. But I do like the idea of having the pops of color and they're in between those Echeverias. I think that'll look nice. It's not mind-blowing. I didn't center this Echeveria with that down here. The That is one thing about the Talavera pottery. Sometimes when I plant these up, I get really hung up on making sure that what I put up top matches up perfectly with what's down below. And then I drive myself insane. So to prevent that from happening, I just d pretended it was just a regular pot. Otherwise it would have been like, no, no, I want this Echeveria up over the blue area and then I'm going to want this one over here over the orange or something of that manner. And it's actually, it's happening right now. I like that blue spot a lot and I wish that I had, see? That's all it takes. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It'll be beautiful from every direction because it's just a beautiful pot. Like it doesn't have necessarily a better side, but I end up going into this mind space of what's the perfect setup. Like, you no, know, not going to go into that. That'll break my brain. I'm not doing that. Okay, well, I was just getting ready to move on to planting up a different pot and heard a bunch of stuff fall over and it's just, just the tortoise, just normal things happening over here. Yeah. Anyways, look at how beautiful this one is. This one uh, is one that I got from like home goods. So I don't have a story behind it. It's just, I thought it was pretty. I keep getting distracted by the tortoise. I'm going to probably do something a little bit different with this one. I have some bromeliads here that I think would look kind of nice in this. I feel like, you know, always see succulents in these. I mean, I just planted succulents in them. Doing something a little bit more tropical might be kind of cool. I only have these two bromeliads to work with though. And both of them are done flowering, so they're not gonna look great for that long, but that's okay. It's, I can redo it in a month when these start to die back, I can pull them and put something else in here. Okay, well, the sun is more direct, intense, and things aren't backlit anymore, but it doesn't really look great. That's all right, we're just hanging out anyways. So the bromeliads that are in here, like I mentioned, they're spent, they're done flowering. They're starting to start their shrivel a little bit, but I'll keep them watered and take care of them and they'll put up pups from the sides and I'll end up pulling these anyways because what I wanted to do with this, oh, I put a justicia in the back too. It didn't have any flowers on it, so there's not really much to say about it right now, but what I wanted to do with this pot originally was put a Brazilian fireworks in this, but I never see those for sale, like ever. Never do I see those for sale. I have one that I've had for like 10 years probably, so I'm gonna get some cuttings going from that plant and start propagating it. Then by the time these bromeliads are ready to be pulled out of here and moved somewhere else where they can grow out until they flower again next year or the year after, I'll go ahead and put that Brazilian fireworks in there. The Brazilian fireworks, actually I went ahead and took a cutting while I was waiting for the long company to leave my neighbor's yard. It's in the top of that fountain there. In like a month or so that should be rooted out and I can put that in here. That's what I've always wanted to do with this pot in particular was to put one of these Brazilian firework plants in it. They have really pretty, I'll just put a picture up on the screen. Can you see it? Isn't it pretty? That'd be perfect in here. They're really easy to grow. Like I said, I've had one for like a decade. It's been potted underneath one of my Eureka palms for probably five or six years. And it's always just grown wonderfully. And I think that for some reason, I don't know, that's just what I've always wanted to put in here. So when I have those ready to go, that's what I'll do. Time-wise, that should line up between when that gets rooted and when it's time to go ahead and pull these and set them aside and let them put up their offshoots for flowering next year. The justicia that I put back here might have to come out. It, they like some shade, but I don't think they're going to want quite as much shade as this Vicia bromeliad back here. I don't know. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that, but it's just, this is just kind of for funsies. It's all for funsies. We're just killing time here. You know, lock down, staying at home, all those sorts of things. And one more down here. There's a great camera angle. This one is one of my favorites that I have. It has the pretty fish on it. It's got that underwater vibe going on. It's just cute. And this pot and this one over here, those are actually from someone who is in the St. Louis area who goes down to a city in 
Mexico every single year and comes back with a whole truck full of these things. And then he sells them to the local nurseries. I think that's really cool. I like being able to support the local nurseries and them being able to support the local families who also have family down, I, I don't remember where he said Juarez, maybe. I see them at places like Home Goods. Nothing wrong with getting them there, but I like being able to get them from the local nurseries and support those families. So with this one though, I had a golden pothos in this for a very long time, and it has been one of those things where every year I just kept putting off repotting that pothos. And it didn't make sense to have that in here, because even though it was on a pole, you couldn't even see the pot. And that defeats the purpose of these really fun, beautiful pots. If you can't see it, if you can't see what's on there, what's the point? And then me being me, a classic overthinker, I spent a very long time trying to decide what I wanted to put in here. I was like, I either want to do a heliconia, maybe a dracaena. I have a nopales. A puntia prickly pear which are traditionally spineless but mine has a lot of the glockids they're like these tiny little fiberglass like spines that i think are worse than big needles on a cactus because you don't see them and then you just you just in pain when they come in contact with you and i want this pot to be someplace where it's kind of out in the open so the spineless cactus I'm gonna want to tuck that a little bit further away than where I would be keeping this and with the pot this cute I mean pretty much anything you put in it's gonna look adorable but I did like just the inner nerd in me was like it would be fun to put a cactus in here because it's like the water and then the cat like those things don't go together that does uh, okay and you know one of the plants that's always been the most near and dear to my heart or heliconias, so that's what I gotta go with for this one. Look at how pretty this foot, well you, it doesn't want to. Yeah, I have this Lady Di heliconia here, it's a Citrocorum. It has really pretty red and yellow bracts on it, so I think that that would look nice in there with that variegation. So I should maybe just put it in there instead of talking about it. Yeah, so I've got a potting mix in here that's got lots of organic material, some perlite, some chunky bark, a good amount of sand, and uh, lots of compost. Nice, rich, well-draining soil. That'll hold on to some moisture. That's the heliconia is like that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plop this down in here. Rhizomes are a little bit loose, so I might need to put a support stake in there for a couple weeks while it establishes itself. Yeah, see, there's not going to be the most beautiful before an another, that's the fifth neighbor in the past two hours that has a long company out. That's okay, get outside, it's a nice day. So one of the other things that I had wanted to do with this pot was to fill the top with lemon coral sedum. I think that the green in that plant would be so pretty against the edge of the pot, but I don't have any, so that's not gonna happen right now. For just a little bit of instant gratification, I think that these roeos would be really pretty up there. Oh yeah, that looks good. And then how about some cascading vinca? I know I'm contradicting, but I'll, we'll talk about it. This heliconia, the way they grow is they'll be putting up growth throughout this entire pot. Within a couple of months, if even, this will have filled out the entire surface. So uh, it will be harder if I have to wait too long to get any lemon coral sedum. It'll be harder to get that potted in here. Hopefully I'll be able to track some down like sometime within the next month. But until then, these are pretty cute. I think they look good in the Tetavera. And then the Vinca has to be placed strategically. These are the Mediterranean strawberry. That's the variety Vinca Cora or Trailing Vinca Mediterranean strawberry is the name of that one. I've always thought that these look really uh, nice. They have kind of like a beachy vibe to them. Things take time to grow in and look nice. It's going to take a minute. <laughs> look at that masterpiece. I'm going to water it and we can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, it may not look it, but give it a few weeks. This is going to look nice. So the Vinca, I know I've been talking about how I don't want things spilling over the sides and hiding the uh, beautiful nature of these pots. These Vinca, the trailing Vinca, have a pretty tight growth to them. They'll lay down more flat after they've been in there for a little while. These came out of a six pack. They're ready to get out of those six packs. Over here, here's a better representation of those trailing vincas. See those flowers? They're very plumeria-like. They have that deep green foliage. And something about them just lends me to coastal, I think, nautical, tropical. That growth is pretty straight and streamlined when it gets going. Kind of like what you would see on something like a Creeping Jenny. So it won't be hard to keep that managed just kind of in the designated areas on the side. So it won't come over everything. It will if I just let it go, but I'm not going to do that. And yeah, like I said, I think it'd be pretty to get some lemon coral sedum potted up around the top of there because then there'd be those pretty kind of lime green, chartreuse green 
puffs coming out the top and it'll just barely come over the edge. It'll come over pretty far if you let it, but it's pretty easy to keep that pruned back. And I just think that all in all together with the variegation, reminds me of like ripples shining through water and then the pretty plumeria like flowers and then you got some more color. It's just, I don't know. For me, it's probably hard to see right now, but for me, I like how this goes together. It's just, it's gonna take a minute. The heliconia, I know I mentioned how that's going to fill out the entire top of the pot. It'll grow right up through those lemon coral sedums and won't be an issue. That's not gonna be a problem at all. But like I said, I need to get the sedum in there first in order for it to work out like that. It's not gonna work the other way around. Like I'd have to dig up the spreading rhizomes and set the heliconia back if that were the case. I don't wanna do that. This is, this is good how it is. It'll look better in a few weeks. You just, just trust me. It's gardening, requires some time and patience. That's okay. Half the fun is watching everything grow and fill out, right? But some, I mean, for the YouTube, it is more fun to have that instant gratification. I can't always do that. So stay tuned for the garden tours and stuff for updates with those. Okay, and then the very last thing I have here, it's a taco holder. I've wanted to plant up a succulent taco for years. You know how hard it is to find a ceramic taco? It's like impossible, but this'll do. And it's not going to be very complicated either because I'm just plopping sedums in there. <laughs> okay, well that was dumb and pointless, but there it is. I would have preferred to do this with some little tiny sempervivums, some hens and chicks. I don't have any though, I'm not going out, so this will do it. Just pulled some sedum out from my garden and stuck it in there. It's okay. I had also wanted to do a uh, margarita. I had a really big margarita glass and uh, I have ordered some uh, light green stones to go around the inside and I was just gonna put some succulents in the top. With the way shipping's going right now, it hasn't shown up yet, so that's okay. But uh, I've always thought it would be cute to have a little succulent taco with a margarita on my tiki bar, so Step one, done. Now I just have to wait for the other stuff to come in from Amazon. I'll be sure to do a video on that when that comes in, when I get my stuff. And there's everything. Everything's all potted up. I have them over here in the filtered light. That's where they'll stay for probably a couple of weeks. The heliconia might even have to go back in the house in a few days. In the forecast pretty closely. Just have to kind of keep my fingers crossed and hope that that doesn't happen. They don't really like to go below 50. They can for a little while, but it uh, sets them back a little bit. And it's nice and warm today. I'd like for it to stay in that active growth state. It's got three different pots, three different styles. I think they look nice. They're not gonna be kept together like this. That I think doesn't really look very good. I like for them to sort of have their own areas where they can stand out on their own. Gorgeous, beautiful pottery from a gorgeous, beautiful country. Very rich culture. Mexico has some gorgeous art, gorgeous pottery, very skilled people. Nothing but love and respect for my neighbors down south. There'll be updates and future garden tours and you know, you'll see them around in vlogs and stuff like that. But I just wanted to sit back, hang out. I had been waiting to get this pot done for like two years. I just kept forgetting because I didn't feel like messing with the pothos that was in it. Whereas I just decided to just yank the pothos out because it's just it's just a golden pothos. Like it, I don't need to put a ton of thought into what I do with that. I'll just throw it in a bigger pot that isn't decorative because you'll never see that pot. So it doesn't matter. I'm glad to have gotten it done. I look forward to getting the Brazilian fireworks potted up into the other one and seeing how these succulents grow over there and i'm most excited about the heliconia up here hope everybody's doing well thanks for hanging out get to do that whole you know the youtube drill down there down below i will be on instagram with updates with these as well probably i usually i like taking pictures of the succulents and the heliconias that'll be a good place to see them and i look forward to when these vincas lay flat against that side that's gonna look so much better i may even depending on how they do i'll watch them for a couple of days but it looks like they're just sort of um, sitting still and staying stretched. I might give them like a 50% cut. And then that would encourage them to bush out more, but I don't really want them to bush out more. I just want them to lay down. Have more of a slender slide of flowers going down the sides. I will have to keep an eye on the Roeos. The Heliconia and the Vinca may want more water than they would prefer. As long as it's nice and hot out, which it will be, it's summertime, I don't really worry about that. It's the nice toasty weather, they can take more water. It's when they're indoors and the temperatures are a little bit more on the cool side that I don't like to have too much moisture around a rodeo. I mean, keep them watered, right? I wouldn't want to be watering them daily, like I'll be doing for the Heliconia. And the Vincas actually, they're fairly drought tolerant too, but they can go either way as long as the soil's well drained and temperatures are warm. That should be the same with the rodeos up there. They've always done fine for me with regular irrigation as long as, like I said, it's warm and they're outside and there's air circulation. All that fun stuff that the tropical plants enjoy. Okay, time to go. Battery's dying, as always. And most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.